Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the constellations and how to find them. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about new videos. Learn the Sky is also on Patreon, so if you'd like to support this channel, the link is listed below. And finally, if you would like to study the sky in greater detail and need a guide, visit LearnTheSky.com to learn more about our online classes we offer. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video we will learn about the constellation known as Ursa Minor, also sometimes called the Little Dipper. Ursa Minor is an ancient constellation, and it's an important one to know. It contains the star called Polaris, which is also known as the North Star, and this is the only star in the sky that appears not to move. Knowing the location of this star can be very helpful for navigational purposes, since it always indicates where the northern direction is. Ursa Minor is an ancient constellation, and the earliest records date back to the ancient Babylonians. It's recognized in many cultures throughout human history. The name Ursa Minor is Latin for lesser bear, and in the second century it was included in Ptolemy's 48 constellations, and is now counted among the 88 modern constellations. This constellation is so important because it contains Polaris, the North Star, and this star right here does not appear to move in the sky, and it's also called often called the Little Dipper, which is technically an asterism, not its true name, but we can use the Little Dipper because that's certainly what it looks like. So when can you see Ursa Minor? It can be seen all year round in the Northern Hemisphere, and the best way to find it are is to use the pointer stars in Ursa Major, which is also called the Big Dipper, and these two stars will point directly to the North Star. You can also use Cassiopeia to help you navigate towards the direction of Polaris as well. Sometimes this constellation can be challenging to see because as you're looking at this picture three of the stars are pretty bright of second magnitude but the other four stars are pretty faint so sometimes when you're looking at it you can really only see three stars out of the seven that makes up this star pattern Let's examine one of the more famous legends about Ursa Minor that comes from Roman mythology. It's about a woman named Callisto and her son Arcus. Jupiter, the king of the gods in Roman mythology, lusted after a woman named Callisto, and Callisto had a son named Arcus, and Jupiter's wife, Juno, believed that the son was Jupiter's. So Juno transformed Callisto into a bear so Jupiter would no longer desire her. Arcus encountered his mother in bear form while he was hunting in the forest, and he nearly killed her. So Jupiter decided to transform Arcus into a bear to protect both mother and son from his wife Juno, and he placed them both in the sky together. This is just one version of the story I read about, and in reality there's a variety of myths and legends that exist about Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. The mythologies of the star vary according to time, place, and culture, and there is really no one true mythology story for any constellation. There's just a variety of them. Now it's time to get familiar with the pattern of Ursa Minor. So here is the official star map of the constellation Ursa Minor, and you can see it contains seven stars in the pattern, but remember constellations are really like borders of country, so all the stars that fall within this white section are part of the constellation. And if you look at the magnitude scale right here and compare it to the stars in Ursa Minor, you can see that really only three of the stars are of higher, or I should say, of lower magnitude, which means that they are brighter. The other four stars are pretty faint, so this can be challenging when you're looking for Ursa Minor. It also has that ladle shape, so you kind of have the, the cup of the ladle, and then here would be the handle, and it kind of curves in this direction. So here we have a picture of Ursa Minor. Are you able to see the three main bright stars in it and then point out the other four fainter stars? Here's what Ursa Minor looks like. And right here, this is Polaris, that star that's oriented over the North Celestial Pole, which 
in turn makes it appear not to move. Let's get some more practice. So here again, we have Ursa Minor. Can you point out that ladle shape, the dipper shape? So right here we have these four stars and then the handle curves upward towards Polaris. Now, the best way to find this constellation is using the little or the big dipper also, which is part of a pattern within the bigger constellation of Ursa Major. So whenever you talk about Ursa Minor, it's usually with Ursa Major, not only because of the legend, but because you use these two constellations to help um, navigate and to find each other. So what we're looking at here is a collection of constellations that can be seen throughout the year. So the circumpolar constellations, they lie very close to Polaris, so you can see them all year round in the northern hemisphere. So if you're looking at this picture, the star that's right in the middle is Polaris. So from there, can you find the handle and then the cup part of Ursa Minor? So if we were to point things out, this is what we have. We have Ursa Minor right here, and then we have Ursa Major, which is really, this is just the Big Dipper part of Ursa Major. And here are the pointer stars that you use to point you towards Polaris. And you can also use Cassiopeia right here. Um, you can use that middle star, kind of like an arrow, pointing you right towards Ursa Major. So these are the two constellations you can use to help find the North Star. There are a few other constellations here. We have Cepheus right there, which is right next to Cassiopeia. And then we have a part of Draco. Draco is a really large constellation, so it doesn't fit in this entire photograph. But how can you tell the difference between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor? There are some differences. These are the three differences I use to help teach others how they look different. So with Ursa Major, the handle is concave. Okay. It's also much larger in size when you compare it to Ursa Minor. And then if you look at the, the different stars here that are in the Big Dipper, they're all of relatively the same magnitude so that it stands out really, really well in the sky. But when you look at Ursa Minor, it kind of has this convex handle. It's smaller in size and really only three of the main stars are easily seen. I have another diagram here for you to help kind of demonstrate this concept. But again, the handles curve differently. Ursa Major is much bigger than Ursa Minor. Um, and in fact, we're really only looking at the asterisms here, the Big Dipper and Little Dipper. For the Big Dipper, the asterism is smaller than the whole constellation. But for the Little Dipper, the Little Dipper asterism is the exact same of the, as the pattern of Ursa Minor. So again, more stars are kind of visible here in the Big Dipper where you have these these three stars are really the ones that are bright. So use these strategies to help you find the differences between these two asterisms and constellations. Now we'll take a look at the brighter stars in this star pattern. So here we have a picture of Ursa Minor and hopefully you're starting to learn the pattern, how the handle curves, and then these four stars connect as well. We have these two brighter stars and then this is Polaris. So let's learn a little bit more about Polaris. It's estimated to be 432 to 433 light years away, and it's a yellow-white supergiant star, at least the main star of this triple star system. So if we zoom in here, remember we use the pointer stars to find Polaris. Here we have Polaris A and Polaris B. And if you had a telescope, you are and aim it towards Polaris, you're most likely able to find Polaris B, but you're not likely to find the smaller Polaris AB because it's just too close to the larger star in the system. If we take a look, a closer look at this system, we have the large uh, white giant star right here and then you have Polaris AB that's very close to the main star and then here is Polaris B. Now all of these stars are larger than our Sun but Polaris B and Polaris AB are only about 1.3 to 1.2 times the mass of our Sun so those two stars are 
very similar to our own star, but Polaris A is estimated to be 4.5 times the mass of our own sun. And remember, I want to give you a visual as to why this star system is so important. It is situated over our North Celestial Pole. So what does that mean? So here we have an image of the Earth, and it shows you the axial tilt. So the tilt of the Earth is estimated to be 23 and a half degrees. And then here, this little star represents Polaris. And Polaris is oriented over our axial tilt. So that's why it appears not to move in the sky. Finally, we'll move on to the celestial objects we can see. And Ursa Minor is pretty devoid of any celestial objects. There's no nebulae and there's no star clusters situated in the boundaries of this constellation. I picked out this map because it shows you a little bit more than the previous map of where this one particular celestial object is, and it is a galaxy right here. Its name is NGC 6217, and it's a barred spiral galaxy estimated to be 67 million light years away. And here we have Ursa Minor, and this is kind of its general location of where it would be. So it's a barred spiral galaxy because it has that bar running right through the center, and then the arms spiral out from there. This concludes our video about Ursa Minor, so let's review everything we've learned about it so far. It's best seen pretty much all year round in the northern hemisphere if you happen to live there, and it's classified as a circumpolar constellation, which means that it can be seen all year round. The best way to find it is learning how to recognize the Big Dipper and use the pointer stars to find Ursa Minor. You can also use the constellation Cassiopeia to light your way as well. The brighter stars include Polaris, Kochab, and Furkab, and there are some celestial objects, there's a couple galaxies, but otherwise it's pretty devoid of any type of celestial objects besides these pairs of galaxies. So I wish you luck in finding Ursa Minor. It's a constellation that it took me... It took me time to be able to find it simply because I was looking for seven stars, but in reality you really can only see about three of them clearly, um, especially if you live in an area that has light pollution. Remember, use the Big Dipper to help you find this constellation, and once you learn how to do it, you'll always be able to find the north direction. Good luck and keep looking up!